Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of our Smart Investing Weekly Stock Analysis, where we break down popular companies using fundamental analysis and provide advice that is truly unbiased and has no strings attached. And remember, if you like what you see here today, be sure to subscribe to our channel down below. Uh, we'll be doing this again every single week, so I think you'll probably pick up some good stocks over the next few months as we continue to do these. But today, uh, kind of a special treat for people. Before we get into the stock of the day, we kind of want to reflect on our video from last week when we talked about Sam Adams and uh, the disappointing news that they saw from their quarter. Yeah, uh, Boston Beer Company last year, uh, last year, last week, uh, they poured earnings and they talked about, oh gosh, you know, things didn't do as well as expected. Uh, the big news was, was their hard seltzers, uh, the growth declined or they lost market share, actually what happened. And it is kind of funny because we saw another beverage company uh, report earnings, I think yesterday, actually their, their, their share on the hard seltzers went up. So we see where it's going out the door, so to speak, for Sam Adams. Uh, and again, there was what, 250 different uh, seltzers out there now. And actually, I think I even heard that Costco came out with their own. Is that true? Did you hear that one? Oh, yeah. And it's 220, I think, is the exact number. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, Costco, Costco seltzers are pretty good, actually. I, I enjoyed them as well. I, they're not my favorite, but um, they're definitely comparable to the other ones out there. So uh, as you said, that's one problem about being kind of early to the market is you're subject to losing that market share as new entrants come in. So definitely wait on that. And I think you got some good numbers on uh, the sales and, and some concerns that we saw there as well. Yeah, because last week we had these sales from the previous quarter because uh, they had just re reported, I think it was on Thursday or Friday. So now we've got the updated numbers and they gave you the numbers last uh, week that we reported because this was for the quarter ending March 27th of this year, obviously. Their sales were up 46.8%, but now for the second quarter, they were up 33.37%, and that's for the last 12 months, year over year. So they have come down. But the big disappointment was in the earnings because last year, last year, gosh, we did this last week, last week, uh, when we talked about the uh, March uh, quarter ending, our earnings had climbed by 141%. For quarter two, they're only up 1.86%. So definitely a slowdown in those earnings. Uh, they're losing market share. Uh, did you take a look at the stock price today, Chase? I, I know, I, know we didn't. I, I did take a look at the stock price and it's about flat actually from last week. So last it week. hasn't, you know, generally some, you'll see when stocks decline that drastically, you'll get what you call like a dead cap bounce where it'll come back because the whole buying opportunity, that didn't even really happen with Sam Adams. It's up a little bit from the, the major decline we saw last week, but current price around $710 a share. And the other thing that we see of, that says of concern is as I talked about those earnings estimates. Last week, the earnings estimates for 2022 was $29.76. That has declined to $28.40 and would give us a target sell price of just $471.44. So a lot to kind of think about with Sam Adams here. And, um, you know, I, I still would say stay away from it. It's, it's not a good company. Well, so, I don't want to say it's a bad company. It's an expensive company still. Yeah, and we, we do want to make that difference for people because a bad company is a bad company. You can have a very good company that's simply overpriced. It means it's not a bad company. It means it's an overpriced company. So make that difference there. Uh, one important technical factor I want to talk about, you know, I was just wondering, you was talking about user terminology, dead cat bounce. I'm just wondering, is there somebody down the road 100 years ago that threw a cat up in the air and see if it bounced? And I... Ding, I, I believe a cat when you throw it up supposedly always lands on their feet. So I don't know, just Maybe it's, it's, thing. because there's a dead cow that bounces. I don't know. <laughs> it's dead. I guess, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess you gotta, gotta kill the cat. Oh my gosh, kill the cat first. That's what We're getting way off topic here. Way off topic, but I just thought I'd bring it up to people in case you ever wondered. We don't know where it came from. So, but, but let's talk about uh, the company that we do want to talk about here. Um, well, before we get into the company, too, I, I want to talk about why we want to talk about this company. And, sure. and we know that there's a global chip shortage out there. I mean, it's a huge problem. I mean, you take a look at the auto industry in particular, they're being crushed right now because they have so much demand for their vehicles, but they don't have the chips to put into the vehicles to sell. So it, it's creating this cascade effect. And I mean, we talk about the semiconductor industry and there's so much room for growth there in terms of where it's going to go because what are semiconductors going to be used for in the future? Tons of things. Yeah, tons of things. And again, they're using so many different things now. We've talked before about washing machines, refrigerators, 
gosh, I mean, anything I can think of now. That's like, I feel like blenders. I think blenders yeah. even use them now. It's yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're used in everything. And, and it's such an important factor that we have seen from technology companies, semiconductor companies saying that they think it's going to last till maybe 2023. So it's very important that we've been kind of looking for a company. And everybody knows it's not a secret. So trying to find a company that's in this industry that is not overpriced, that should do well over the next 12, 24, 36 months, is what we're kind of looking for because that's how you make money investing is finding those underpriced companies that have good quality businesses but are on sale for some reason. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I mean, it is, I think, going to be a, a growing problem if we don't get it fixed. Because as you said, the semiconductor usage and the, the need, demand for it, it's not going to decline over the next five no. years. Everything is going to continue to increase. So you want to find something that you're going to be able to benefit from that growing trend there in terms of semiconductors. I just had a lot of the popular names, I'm going to say like the AMDs, the NVIDIAs, the, the more common plays, and also not to mention the LAM researches as well. I mean, the, the semiconductor equipment maker, they're very expensive because I think everybody knows about it. But one thing we're looking at here, is there an opportunity to find a good business? And, and we think we found one of interest that, that could be a, a good investment. I say could be because it's still going to require more research, but the name of that company is Kohu. And you might be saying, Co who? You know? <laughs> I've never heard of it. <laughs> and, I, and I do like that they're right in our backyard here in San Diego, and they just built a new corporate office. I don't know if they're uh, in it yet. I'll be going down there, I think, next week. Uh, blood donation always goes right, right by that building. So, but yeah, it's a massive building uh, that they built down there, and, and uh, very exciting. And I believe their headquarters is right in my hometown of Poway. So I, I, I are they really? I thought it was down on Balboa. No, I think that might be a satellite office, or they might be moving there. I, I'm not sure. Right now, they're currently headquartered in Poway. But you might be saying, well, what does this company do? They actually do these semiconductor test and inspection equipment. So they're not manufacturing the semiconductors. They're doing a lot of the back end stuff. And we always say here that sometimes it's important to look for well, who's making the mines and the picks. We say that because of the gold rush. Who made more money off that? There are some people that made a lot of money off finding gold, but the large majority of people did not make money finding gold there. It was those pick and shovel makers that actually made a lot of money back then. And, and this could be that pick and shovel. Yeah, a lot of picks and shovels were bought back then as well. That's the important part. Yeah. So, as always, we do want to get into the fundamentals because that's what we are. Again, we're fundamental investors here. We want to look at the numbers before we invest in a business. So let's go ahead and take a look at the fundamentals for Kohu and uh, see what the numbers look like. All righty. Well, uh, look at the uh, price earnings ratio, how much you're paying for the earnings that's coming based on the price. Uh, and this says uh, earnings as of 626. So we do have second quarter number here. Uh, 50 times, uh, and this is trailing 12 months earnings or last 12 months. Uh, above the industry at 37.9. So that's a little bit of expense. We don't like seeing that. But what is good though, is the price to sales. 2.3, that's about one third of the industry at 6.5. And the big difference here is that it's talked about with earnings, you can manipulate them, you know, with accounting and so forth, change them. But sales are pure. You can't do anything at sales numbers. So it is what it is. So sales paying a lot less of the sales for Kohu at 2.3 versus 6.5. Price to book value, also very good, 5.9 versus 21.5. So that's very expensive. And price of cash flow for Kohu, slightly better than the industry at 19.98 versus 20.4. So you're getting a good, I'd say good value there, being a little bit less than the industry. They do not pay a dividend, unfortunately. But look at these numbers here. The sales growth year over year for the last 12 months of 25.79. But I'm going to say about double the industry at 14.8. So nice sales growth. And look at the earnings growth here. And this is very important because you show a sales growth. I'm sorry, earnings growth year over year, last 12 months, 144% versus a measly 6.7% for the industry. So Kohu really doing a great job growing their earnings. Now, whenever you're investing, you want to make sure that you're not investing in some high flyer that's here today and gone tomorrow. You want to make sure they got a good balance sheet. Kohu's balance sheet looking pretty strong here. Current ratio showing good liquidity, 3.25 above the industry at 2.3. And yes, you do want these numbers higher than the industry average. What you don't want higher than the industry average is the total debt to equity. And here again, they got a nice clean balance sheet, 29.4 versus 56. So again, not a lot of debt on the balance sheet compared to the industry. Looking a little bit tippet here, and we'd have to find out why, but we do see that return on equity for Kohu is 5.1 about one-fourth the industry at 20. So I would want to know why is that return on equity so low? Uh, maybe the equity is so large. 
something. But again, you want to get an answer to that question before you invest in the company. Also, to look at the profit margin, also kind of low, 4.3 versus 17.9. And also, I'm thinking maybe they had some write-offs over the last 12 months that hurt that profit margin. And then receivable turnover is 4.7 versus 9. Uh, again, could be a problem there. And inventory turnover also 2.7 versus 4.9 could be a problem there. And uh, I was hoping I'd scroll down a little bit more, Chase, because I didn't want to see the industry in which they compete in because we do see that they are in, oh, you know, you just went to, to your side there. So I can't see the industry that they compete in uh, because I think it is a specific industry. Uh, yeah, that, there it is. They're in the semiconductor equipment and testing industry. Well, that's kind of, that is unique to them. So they are competing in the same industry. Sometimes those industries are, are kind of far from what they do, but not in this case here. So I would want to know why their inventory uh, and why the receivables aren't as good as the, the uh, industry. Yeah, well, let's take a look here, kind of going forward, all, all these numbers you just covered did occur in the past. So let's start off with the current price for COVID, $34.42, 52-week high less, $51.86, and 52-week low, $15.73. And I do know this company reported earnings this past week, a beat on earnings, beat on sales, but their guidance going forward was, uh, I'm going to say lackluster. It, it didn't impress the analysts enough. They fell about, gosh, I think it was 8-9% on uh Thursday, so uh, yesterday, and it, it was, uh, I think, maybe a buying opportunity if you can put the right pieces to the puzzle. And I, I say that because you go out to December 2022, you see estimated earnings per share in this case of $3.30. That would actually give you a, a pretty solid target sell price using our multiple of 16.6. It'd be $54.78. I mean, well above that current price at $34. 42 and i was quite surprised to be honest to see nine different analysts here because this is a smaller company with a market cap of just about 1.7 billion so i feel pretty comfortable with, with nine analysts providing that that uh, estimate again a phenomenal target sell price and the other thing i'll point out is we looked at those valuation ratios over the last 12 months well look at this they had non-gap earnings of one dollar 19 cents but on a gap basis, they lost 33 cents. So you got to understand what's going on with these numbers. Why was there such a large discrepancy? And there's, I think, tremendous opportunity with this company. But you, you got to tread lightly because there could also be some pitfalls that you might be missing if you just buy it on a whim. Yeah, you, you want to make sure you check those numbers, not just say, oh, wow, the, the 330 sounds exciting. I'm going to buy it. Understand what's going on because that could cause a problem down the road which is why before we invest in any company, it's 10, 15, 20 hours of research to really understand what that business is. So don't, just because we're saying it looks pretty good, invest into it, understand what you're getting into because it could be a problem down the road and, and you hate to yeah. get into that and regret it later on. Yeah, and I, I think this is one in particular that you could do phenomenally well on it, but as I said, it, it could be something that, that we're missing here. It looks very good on the surface, but sometimes you got to get on that surface to find some potential problems. And, and this is one I would definitely put on a watch list. And you got to go through, look at the conference calls, the 10Q, 10K, see what's going on. As I said, that guidance wasn't that good. Well, we know that semiconductors are in need. Why wasn't that guidance good? You got to understand those questions. And I think as a big opportunity, but do a little more reading on it. I'll tell you right now, we haven't bought this business, but it looks kind of interesting. Yeah, we're, we're just a starting game in this business. It's not like we're going to buy it tomorrow. Uh, we saw the numbers. We like the numbers. We're thinking, yeah, this is worth the research. Uh, and I do have to say, I mean, this is not always the case. But again, they're building that huge building down on Balboa in San Diego, uh, Bal Balboa Avenue. And, and that shows me that they're confident that business is growing and so forth. But that could also be moving the numbers around a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure how the accounting is working on that. So maybe that's part of it. These are the things you got to look at to understand. When you invest, you should be coming up with questions. And don't ignore the questions get the answer to those questions to make sure that the answers you want, don't just say, I don't know what it is, but I'm still gonna buy the stock. Not a good way to invest. Well, hey, maybe we can go down there and ask them after we finish this uh, episode here. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to get our hard hats though, I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, anyways, thank you so much for joining us today. If you like the content, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming stock videos. This should not be used as investment advice as it is for informational purposes only. If you are interested in learning more about our investment philosophy, visit our website, smartinvesting2000.com. Again, that's smartinvesting2000.com.